Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Waban, the movie and TV show podcast where an expert on the subject discusses things with uh, the average viewer. Uh, so today, uh, wait, wait, I'm your host, Nim. There you go. There's my intro. Mm-hmm. And today I am joined by L. I I don't got anything for that one. I'm sorry for you. you. Don't. Uh, yeah. man. I mean, I guess I could have done like a weird voice of like, oh, 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 but it would have just come out terrible. <laughs> I feel like these intros always come out terrible, though. Like, it's just a bad no. idea, but we do it anyways because we well, it, are, are yeah, bad at it podcasts. Almost, <laughs> it's almost <laughs> like you can only really go up from here, you know? Like, you put me on the spot like this, and, you know, I have to shake myself out of it and get through the nervousness, and then I'm good. And then everyone knows, hey, this is going to be the worst part of the podcast. (laughs) That's true. So, yeah, yeah, that's a good point. You start bad, and then you get better as the podcast goes. Yeah. Um, Yeah, so basically, we've been watching through... Death Note, uh, and we already talked about the first six episodes uh, a few weeks ago, and now we're we decided we were going to go through the next ten episodes. So we made it up to episode sixteen of Death Note, and we're going to sort of go over and talk about uh, where things have gone from there. So uh, yeah, any and do you have any starting notes with that? I mean, there's a lot we can say, but. I think it's best we just get into it, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Just get right into it. Um, so I think one of the one of the big things to bring up, I guess, is sort of the new characters that are introduced. Right. So right. The, the the big in these next several episodes, which is um, Misa, the girl who you know, ends up with a different death note and her, Mm -hmm. um, her Shinigami, whose name is, what is it again? Rem. Rem Rem or Rem? Rem. Rem. With an M. Okay. (laughs) Whose name is Rem. Um, Mm. and I think this one's interesting because, so it's interesting to see sort of the differences in like why death notes are dropped and like what the, you know, Shinigami's like, the differences between their personalities and what their goals are. So mm-hmm. Ryuk just kind of dropped it randomly, right? Yeah. And out of boredom. Out of boredom what would happen? Right. Seeing what would happen. Uh, so somebody random would pick it up because he's very much, he just enjoys witnessing the chaos of what would mm-hmm. happen, you know, whatever. He doesn't really care about anybody in particular. But Rem is different because she specifically wanted a specific person to get it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So she watched, which I I found that really interesting the way they introduced the whole, how a Shinigami can die uh, because Uh her Rem's friend who was a Shinigami, she, he was, he, he sort of had been watching this girl in her life and, and sort of, had this weird love that he had the idiot had formed with her just watching her from afar which is a little weird but oh yeah definitely you know i feel like i feel like it makes sense in the context of like these shinigami are just kind of trapped in this miserable world so like seeing somebody live their life in the human world and like a live a good life might you know <laughs> might make might make that easier to like fall for somebody if if you're you know, if your personality fits that, because I mean, you couldn't picture like Ryuk falling in love with somebody like that. You know, he's very much, mm-hmm. you know, <laughs> just, just kind of do things and see what happens. Right, right. Um, so, and he, they get to the end of her life because obviously the Shinigami know they can see when somebody's life is going to end. Mm-hmm. Gets to the end of her life, and he knows it's coming. He sees, and it turns out, because she's still young, so it seems weird that, like, she's going to die already uh, that young, but it's because she's going to be attacked by somebody who's going to murder her. And he decides, I'm going to prevent this because he is so infatuated with her, and he writes in his death note and kills 
on the spot the guy who's about to murder her. And turns mm-hmm. out that's sort of like breaking the rules, right? You're not allowed to do something that will knowingly extend, extend somebody's life, right? You can't yeah. actively try to extend because the Ashinigami's role to play is to take End somebody's life, life or yeah, cut yeah. somebody's life short, but not to extend. So he did something that extended her life um, out of love too. And that's also not allowed. So it basically causes him to turn to dust and Rem witnesses this happening. And it's actually kind of a sad story. Like when you see it happening, mm-hmm. um, yeah, she's watching your friend die. Cause, and you see the flashback and she, when she's describing the story, it's like actually really sad. It's like in a sad mm-hmm. way, like her voice and stuff. Um, so she sort of also grows this attachment to that person, the person that he fell in love with, which is Misa. And so she decides she wants to go and give drop a death note, give it to Misa and then follow her around and yeah. sort of maybe, you know, get to know her and, and protect her maybe even. Right. Um, and it, I don't know, it shows a unique difference between Rem and Ryuku. Ryuk just doesn't care. He's doing this out of boredom and he's just mm-hmm. a spectator. He doesn't care whether light lives or dies. Yeah. But Whereas, Rem he yeah. cares for Misa and like, you know, will actively help her as it's yeah. shown in right, some of the Right, exactly. Episodes. Because she's, you know, she threatens to kill light. Mm-hmm. Um, she she agrees to kill L if it means making uh, Misa more happy. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, different things like that. Even down to the point where she said, like, I will kill you. Even if it means that it extends her life and causes me to die, I will do it. You know, like, yeah, she's very much like I'm going to protect Misa. Um yeah, which I, I thought was a really interesting dynamic to throw in there because, you know, again, it's just a huge contrast to the dynamic between Light and Ryuk, which right. is pretty much just Ryuk following him around going, so what are you doing this for? Oh, this is why I'm doing this. And him going, ooh, yeah. this is interesting. Hmm. And then give me apples, you know, like that's their mm-hmm. whole relationship, right? Yeah, Ryuk <laughs> is pretty much just there to be like, ask the questions that the audience is asking and I love it. Yeah, right. <laughs> Pretty much. Uh, yeah. So it, it's interesting to see because I always I always thought it was interesting in the those first several you know six episodes we watched. It was kind of interesting to see that like the the character of Ryuk is just kind of there following. He's not he's not really affecting the plot at all. Really, I mean, mm-hmm. I was like, I mean, like okay. uses him every once in a while, like when he handed the death note paper to the guy hijacking the bus so he oh, saw yeah. Ryuk right, and right. got scared right there's little details like that but overall he's just kind of he doesn't affect the plot much he's just kind of yeah. there hanging out following him around so I was like okay so having this whole I thought it was interesting to have the whole you know Ashinigami follows you around for the rest of your life it seemed interesting because I was like are they going to really do much with that idea because it mm-hmm. seemed very much like he was again, like I said, he was there just to kind of follow around and have somebody for him to talk to about his plans and stuff, you know, um, which was fine. I think it was just, you know, but then now they're introducing the idea of a Shinigami who's actually actively invested in somebody's life and protecting a certain person. Mm -hmm. So I just think it was an interesting dynamic to throw in. Um, I before we get much farther with this, I want to just talk about that first episode, the uh, episode seven that we first. Oh watched. yes, yes. Because you you know that clears up like the entirety of all the issues that, like you know, the cliffhanger at episode six did. Yeah. Because light is manipulating the fiance of the FBI agent that he killed. Because, you know, she is the one piece that either Kira needs to, you know, stop 
or the investigation needs to finally find Kira. Yeah. <clears throat> and it was such a like intense moment of like, yeah, you know, Light decides he needs to kill her because she's going to get him killed or caught. Yeah. And then they realize he can't because she gave know, him a shaky name. Right. But all of this is just this entire episode is just a walk, right? It's a stroll with these two characters with some cuts in the middle to like show the investigation progress. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But it, this entire episode is just a single long buildup to when he finally gets her real name, writes it in the death note. It starts snowing dramatically. There's the freaking holy music in the background. The investigator that's trying to catch him puts up an umbrella from the snow and coincidentally misses them. <laughs> And then he, like, at the just, the, she's like, why do you keep checking your watch? He looks for a second, oh, just because the time is right. And he goes, I am Kira. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's the entire thing is just this one long, big setup for that one moment that's like ultimately dramatic and it's just yeah. perfect. And you just see, and they, and then they, so this, so this show starts to use a lot of like sort of metaphorical imagery. Mm -hmm. Instead of just literal imagery. So like, especially as the show moves on, I think, I think earlier on it wasn't, didn't do this as much, but like, so like it shows like this, this dramatic imagery of like, you know, everything fades and it's just stairs leading up to a gallow and she yeah. walks up to it to like hang herself essentially, which obviously she didn't literally do. She, you know, we don't know actually how she killed herself. Like we don't, mm -hmm. like she went off somewhere. The whole idea was that she went off somewhere where she wouldn't be, it would be hard to find her because nobody has found her body yet. But it was like a metaphorical, like she's just walking off to kill herself. Like here's right, our metaphorical right. imagery showing that, <laughs> um, which is kind of interesting. They really start mm -hmm. to use, utilize that sort of metaphorical imagery a lot as this mm -hmm. goes on to, um, especially with their, the sort of, inner monologues between L like not between like with L and light and you see them like standing on top of like tall buildings and stuff and like yeah, just when one has an right when when one has an advantage over the other they're higher than the other one like mm -hmm. like little thing and like they 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 you know change it so like L's hair and eyes are like really blue and 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 or the lights I say, are red. Lights, yeah, lights are red. You know, mm -hmm. like for this like over dramatic like metaphorical imagery of what's going on with their you know battle, their yeah, sort of yeah. mental battle they're they're going through. Not only that, but in like in this moment, Light himself shows like a big preference for dramatic flair. Mm -hmm. Like just telling her that he is Kira in that moment, he didn't have to do that. That was a risk on his part. Like, well, right. If it happened that, like, you know, he couldn't completely control a person, or like she did one more thing before that happened, or like he timed it wrong, that would have been the end of him. Yeah, but I think there's a part of him that takes joy in like seeing that that like fear in her eyes as like. Mm -hmm realizing like like he wants somebody to even though he can't tell you know he he wants somebody to sort of witness his judgment i guess witness his what he's yeah. doing despite well, like the fact and know that it's him despite because he knows he can't obviously go tell people so he's like oh i'm gonna let people know right before they die mm -hmm. <laughs> so like it's it's interesting because he has that God complex throughout the show. Like that's not a new thing, but right. this is the first time where he's like, yeah, I want to reveal myself in this small capacity to, you know, pretend like to potentially like either be worshiped or just to so fear of my power. Mm -hmm. And I don't know this, these <laughs> 10 episodes just really, drive home the fact that uh 
Light's not a good person. Like he wasn't a good no. person the first six either. But this, no, he, this it really, really drives, drives it home. Because he's very much he never like sees human beings as like people with feelings and thoughts and, and you know he he always just mm-hmm. kind of sees everybody as like I can use you or how how are you gonna get in my way or Yes. You know, like especially with like Misa, for instance, because she's like total simping for him, right? Like she's the definition of simp, okay? Mm-hmm. Literally. Yeah, yeah. Um and he's well, not like simps for her, but yeah. Right. And he just totally abuses that sort of infatuation she has for him. Yeah. Like in kind of a really messed up way. He's just like, oh, you'll listen to anything I say. Well, mm-hmm. like I'll demand what I want from you. And like, it's just be just mm-hmm. to get what he wants. Like, and he says like, like he even goes over the whole thing. He's like, Ooh, wait, uh, Rem, can you kill L? Because technically that will make yeah. me, that might make me like uh, her more, which will make her happier. Even though like in reality, it probably won't make him love her more. Mm -hmm. He'll just act like he, you know, does, which he's, yeah, as we've seen, he's a good actor. He's good at Nick lying. Yeah. So incredible liar. (laughs) So like he comes up with lies on the spot all the time. Mm He's like, it's insane. Um, Yeah. Like just seeing his his like relationship with her with Misa is just just really messed up. <laughs> yeah, it's it's not it's not great to watch. It like makes okay, me very uncomfortable. Yeah, like from one perspective, she's a little over eager with it and overly like extreme with it. She's a little she's a little over the top with her. Like I, I'm so mm-hmm. in love with you. I'm so in love with you. You know, like like it's like a, come on, right. you just met him. Like let's back off a little bit, but. He the way he abuses that yes. power he has over her is just horrible. Um, yeah. He's a yeah. horrible person. He he really is. Um yeah, like I and it's you know, it's one of those things where it's like like I, I you know, I'm guessing the show's leading to eventually him, you know, getting some sort of comeuppance, right? Him either I was gonna say go to going to hell, but I feel like it's that they say you can't go to hell or heaven yeah. if you use the death note. So like him going mm-hmm. to some sort of horrible purgatory or something, I don't know where he's what's gonna happen to him. But you know, like him having some sort of like realization of like like he gets what he what's coming to him basically. Like that's yeah, what I yeah. I'm, it, that's probably gonna happen, and I and I you know hope L has the satisfaction of you know winning because i really like l l's a good guy i mean he's some of his some of his tactics are a little iffy you know like he's you know putting the surveillance system in their house that's a little Mm -hmm. um capturing misa and tying her up like that. yeah that's true that's true that that's true but he's he's so determined that she is you know the the copycat killer so i guess there's, there's kind of like a not, not, and then he's sort of worried about you know he knows like if she sees somebody she could kill them so covers up her eyes um but but still like i i feel like he's just kind of like that guy who like never had any friends because everybody thought he was odd and so like she's just hard for him to connect with human beings and it's like mm-hmm. Like there was that moment where I and I don't know how genuine he was being when he said this, where he said to Light, he's like, "You're the only friend, like best friend I've ever had," or whatever he said. Like you're just I'm really good sure friend. it was only yeah, only friend I've ever had, and and he was like, it seemed genuine. Like maybe there was like maybe part of it was just a way to get into L Light's head to like whatever to see what would happen. But like another yeah. part of it might've been a look kind of genuine, you know, which if it is genuine, I feel really bad for L because light mm-hmm. is hell bent on killing him. So. <laughs> yeah. This, they really, both sides are driven to an extreme in these mm-hmm. 10 episodes. Mm-hmm. One, like, 
you know, telling the fiance that he's Kira, manipulating Misa, and then L capturing Misa like that and putting those three in like isolation. Right. I mean, technically, Light and Light's father willingly went into, you know, captivity. Mm-hmm. Uh, although Misa obviously did. But. Well, I feel bad now, too, because she completely forgot about the Death Note and stuff. And he has no way of knowing yeah. that. So they're confused and like, like, uh, like now it's interesting. I mean, I know like in the next few episodes, we'll see what happens with that because, you know, light, whenever light gets out mm-hmm. and gets the death note back, which I'm assuming because he buried it with the assumption of, like he's going to eventually get it back somehow, which I don't know how exactly because he forgot about it. So how is he going to know to look there? Maybe he left clues for himself. Maybe he left clues for himself to help him remember or help him find it again. I don't Mm -hmm. know. We'll find out. That'll be interesting to see. Um, But once he does that, he's going to have to say, find a way to, to save Misa because he sort of made, he made a promise to Rem. And if he doesn't yeah, fulfill Rem's, that promise, Rem is going to kill him. So, you know, it's like he, he sort of yeah. dug himself into this hole. We stopped at a perfect point of like stalemate, which is, I had forgotten this was this that episode, but I was hoping. But like, you know, light's locked up and he's forgotten the death note. He can't do anything. He's clearly set it up so that people will still be keep being killed now but he's for a little bit yeah now. yeah but you know l's observing all this and so much of it doesn't make sense it contradicts past evidence and so right. he's just trying to figure this out and they're just in a perfect stalemate right now yeah well yeah and, and i remember in that closer to the end of that episode l is like l l is actually legitimately confused because through most mm-hmm. of his investigation he seems to be very in control he's like we're getting one step closer one step closer one step closer every little bit he's very mm-hmm. like controlled he's like we got this but this is the first time i feel like he's genuinely like doesn't know what to think because again he doesn't know how the whole death note works obviously he doesn't know it exists so he right. has no clue, like like the whole them completely forgetting about the death note. She doesn't know that that's how that works. So it's, yeah. he's confused. He's like, why is Misa suddenly know nothing about the, you know, the yeah, deaths her and entire, everything? Yeah, her clue changed. So you know, now she's saying that Light's her boyfriend, which she didn't say before. Now she's saying that she admires Kira. And she thinks that she's been caught by a stalker suddenly, which yeah, none of it makes sense. Yeah, exactly. Because before she knew why she was taken into custody, you know, but now she seems mm-hmm. so confused. And and even like Light at the end there, he's like, "What? This is just a setup. They're tr- somebody's trying to like like." And he in the in the 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 hard part is that like. Light is actually being genuine when he mm-hmm. says they're setting up because he doesn't know that it was him at now because he forgot. Yeah. Like, like it's just I that episode, like the episode ended and I was like, I want to continue, but I won't. I'll wait till next time. Mm-hmm. I'm just because well, like you keep thinking, OK, what if this happens? What if that happens? But none of this adds up, right? Because mm-hmm. if L lets light out, light gets out, like doesn't know that he's Kira right now so he'll just help with the investigation right and they're investigating to get the death note back when he hit it yeah Uh, I'm I'm guessing maybe he set up like clues somewhere that he knew he would be able to find Mm -hmm. that point him towards it maybe um because he's you know that seems like something light would do you know he would he would right think things through that light would never go in something like this without a plan yeah so you're not given any hint of what that plan is yeah yeah it's one of those things where it's like you'll find out (laughs) when you watch more so guess we'll figure that out so yeah Yeah. it's it's really interesting um and i'm i'm like i'm guessing at some point 
So I, I did Rem took both of her the death notes with her. The one that right. she has her personal okay. one and the one she got with her friend, which yes. Light gave back to her. Yeah, yeah. So the one that yeah, okay. So I'm wondering if somehow Rem is gonna be brought back into the show eventually. I don't know if there's a way for I mean she might just stay in the in the Shinigami realm mm-hmm. the whole time, just waiting that's to an, kill Light. <laughs> yeah, that's an entire another thing. Because if Light doesn't save Misa like he promised, then Rem will kill him. But yeah. if you know, he needs to figure out some way to deal with that, whether it be actually saving Misa or just getting rid of Rem, which might be even harder considering how you need to kill a Shinigami. Right. Yeah, exactly. Which yeah. Yeah, it's it's this whole there's a lot going on and I just mm-hmm. <laughs> wanna know what's gonna happen. Um uh. Yeah. Um, Another interesting thing, and I guess this was earlier on in these 10 episodes that we watched, like before, even before Rem comes in and before Misa comes in, Mm -hmm. um, we finally had the first time Light and L meet. Oh, yeah. We completely skipped over that. Yeah, I know. We did. Um, I mean, that's a very important thing because, you know, Mm -hmm. they're like the two main characters, you know, uh, essentially. So... I found that interesting that it's like they they go they're at the college like speech or whatever they're both going going up to give the speech because they both got were the two that got like the perfect score on the tests or whatever right and everybody's like they're like polar opposites he's like well put together you know mm-hmm. handsome guy and that guy's just a weirdo <laughs> like. When in actuality, they're, like, basically the same person, like, same cognitive abilities, same sport abilities, like, all of it. Yeah. And, like, like they Same, like, don't want to lose personality. They have their overly dramatic tennis match, mm-hmm. which is just, they're sitting there like, oh, should I throw this match on purpose? What would he think if I did that? What's, like, yeah. they literally think of every detail. It's like, dude, it's a tennis match. Like, just... Freaking play! Mm-hmm. <laughs> I just think it's, it's hilarious. I it's so good. Or, yeah, like it's hilarious. The bit of comedy when uh, Light calls Misa's phone, and L just pulls that out of his pocket, just like, "Hey, look at this! It's ringing." He's <laughs> like, he's like, hmm? just like, I was just like, uh, because I was like, he's gonna call her. And I'm like, oh no, she knows his name, real name. I'm like, it's. I was like worried for L. I was like, I, they're not mm. going to kill L at this point in the show, right? L's not going to die. That would that would ruin this, sh- this show. And I was Meanwhile, like, the entire time I know this is happening, I'm just like, here comes the phone. And then she he pulls it out, and I was like, eh. And then and then when he t- tells, I was like, but he could still go find her and ask her or whatever. And mm-hmm. I was like, but then he's like, oh yeah, we have her in custody now. Um, yeah. <laughs> I was like, oh. oh really? <laughs> good job l and i think that was one of the times where it showed like them on the buildings and it showed like l higher than than light like showing like, yeah yeah right? no maybe oh, it was i mean i'm trying to think who had the advantage of that situation but i guess it was l because because you know, well, he once he stopped him from killing him what yeah once he said like i have her in custody blah blah blah, and like you i know you were calling her and all that stuff which you know uh, raises l's suspicions that it's you know l has always been suspicious of light for a while now but like this Mm -hmm. raises his suspicions a lot um and to the point where he's the prime suspect you know yeah um yeah, I, I also know. love the moment where he's to Light's father, just like, if I die within the next few days, your son is uh, Kira. It's like, what? Just so well, and casually. then he, he goes and tells Light this mm-hmm. so that he knows, like, so that way he knows that, like, because he knows he's like, oh, he they find out that there's this second Kira, you know, this copycat Kira who's, who's, um, who can kill people just by looking, seeing their face or whatever. So right. he knows he's like, that kind of puts me at risk. 
but he also knows that that Kira is sort of following what the original Kira says kind of, or at least see that's his assumption, Mm -hmm. which is, you know, true. He's like, so if I set it up in a way where, so he's like, if light is Kira, I want him to be, because, you know, he doesn't know for sure, but he, he has his suspicions. He's like, if light is Kira, I want to set it up so he wouldn't even want to kill me. Because if he kills me, then everybody's going to assume that he's. And I was like, yeah, smart move it's, there. It's a perfect defense. Like, I just, I, I love, I love seeing L's just kind of like. And figuring things out and how he's like comes up with all these like plans to like protect himself and like whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, but there's, I just, one of the things there was when they were showing light, the videos that weren't aired from mm-hmm. the second Kira. Yeah. And lights in his head thinking like, okay, if I don't say anything, about there being a second Kira, then, like, you know, L will die. Because, right. you know, they won't be able to change that. But that would also make him more suspicious if, you know, he can't come to the same conclusion as L did, because he L knows how smart he is. Yeah. But yeah. I, it seemed to me like the thing that pushed him over the edge into saying that there's a second Kira wasn't the risk of it wasn't you know whatever else it was his pride in saying that the real kira him did something that sloppy yeah he didn't want like he's like this can't be yeah yeah exactly Mm -hmm. yeah there's sort of this yeah well it it is interesting to sort of see like because like so far in the show we've seen light is is kira light is the one who's in control of all this and he he's very meticulous and and thinks about everything he does and he's very intelligent with it it's interesting to see somebody else from who doing this essentially the same thing or attempting to do the same thing but not being as cautious about it not being as you know because if you notice this investigation to figure out who Kira is has been going on for a while. Elle has been a somewhat of a suspect, but they, there's never been a hundred percent. Yep. You're Kira with the second one. They figured it out real quick. Like, Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like it, I'm, I'm just, just pause what you're saying for just a moment. Every once in a while you get light and L mixed up. I've been noticing. Or, yeah, probably. I don't know. Yeah. You know, they both, it's both with an L. So it's yeah. like, I'm like, light well, L. L is the investigator. Yes, I know. I know. Light I know which one is zero. which. Okay. I know which one is which. I just probably got it. I accidentally said it wrong. But no, because like, it's just interesting because like light is very, yeah, yeah. Light is very cautious about how he kills people or whatever. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, Misa isn't. And therefore, because of that, L figured out that Misa is the copycat like really quick <laughs> um yeah which is interesting um to see like yeah so i don't know this is this is definitely getting very interesting mm-hmm. um i just want to see i don't know I, th- I think it's funny and how over dramatic certain things are though because there's definitely oh, a yeah. lot of like over dramatic things like one of my f- tennis match the tennis match is so overdramatic. Yes, that. Mm-hmm. But one of my favorite moments of this in these episodes was the part where he's like, <laughs> he's he. They have the cameras in his house, and so he's like, he has <laughs> oh, the I the, know what you're shit, about. the yeah. chips, and he goes, "I am going to eat a potato chip," like so over, mm-hmm. and he like. Sh- there's like that slow mo shot of him like taking a bite of a potato chip, and it's like yeah, so really dramatic. dramatic. It's and so. It's not even a proper bite. It's him like biting the one half of it and ripping it off as if it's like a like a turkey leg or something. And like you don't eat a potato chip like that. What? The? Mm-hmm. It's so. Oh, I love that. It's. I'm just like. He's eating like. 
So like, yeah, you use the potato chip bag to hide your thing, your phone and your, which I, I, I still, I don't know. I still think that part is a little weird. Like how he like hid his phone. Or I guess it was not his phone. It was a small LCD screen. Yeah. 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 I guess they didn't really have those like smartphones, but when did this show come out? Like 2006, something like that. I mean, 2000, I think somewhere around we, there. Well, yeah, 2006. In 2007, I know, because they said that there was a journal okay. from 2006 that it said it was from last year. So, so I'm looking at it. It says it was made in two. Oh, release statement. Wait, I'm getting a few different answers. It One might says be different t- between like English and Japanese. Oh, okay. Them. So. So yeah, I'm gonna say I don't know, 2006, seven, eight, somewhere around there. And either way, yeah. But anyways, yeah, he has that in the chip bag, and he also has the death note in the chip bag, which I'm well, still trying to scrap of it. But yeah, I'm still trying to figure out how he got that in there without the people from the cameras, the cameras noticing, like watching mm-hmm. on the cameras. Well, yeah, and you watch him open that chip bag. Yeah, so like I'm still confused by while that. It was closed. Yeah, and also he then, as soon as he's done, grabs the chip bag and throws it in the garbage. And I'm like, are you leaving the screen in there? Yeah. I'm they, guessing he, he did. He watches, it take, he watches them take it to the garbage truck and get so, it. So, yeah, it. so he just got rid of the screen to get rid of any sort of, like, evidence, I guess. But I still mm-hmm. don't know how he got it in there. Like, I'm just – also, like – I feel like the, the sh- it was shown that the cameras were at like every angle, so I feel like one angle would have seen into the chip bag. You know, like I don't know that. I feel like yeah, that yeah. that was a scene where it was a little bit of a stretch, where I was almost like, okay, why doesn't he just find like a private place to go somewhere else to maybe do it? I don't know. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Yeah. Maybe I guess that was the only place he had access to like a TV. With yeah, connection, that's, that's, that's understandable. Good. But it's like, it's still, I still, I feel like the logic of it was a little bit of a stretch. Where I was like, "How did yeah, he pull yeah. this off?" That was like, and the and again, the, just the, I'm going to eat a potato chip. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'll solve equations with my right hand and kill criminals with my left. I'll eat a potato chip. <laughs> Oh my gosh. It's just like the only time I could, the only time I've ever, I've, I've never thought I'd see such a dramatic eating of a potato chip. And mm-hmm. I have. So there you go. There's there's also the moment when all the <laughs> investigators are just sitting around the TV looking at everything, like looking at like the surveillance cameras or maybe it was the tapes from the second Kira, but they're all just eating ice cream while the butler makes them scoops. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> uh, uh, I love so like one thing I think is interesting about L too. And I just remembered this. Is you know how he always like sits weird. He always sits with like his feet up mm-hmm. on the chair. He's, yeah, like, like the crouching. scene. Yeah, the scene where he's like, the, like, it's like, why do you sit like that? He's like, well, if I sit, if I don't sit like, if I sit like this, it increases my. Um, what is it? He's like, it increases my deductive um, skills or whatever by yeah. such and such percent like it, it makes him like, think better it makes him yeah. think better basically <laughs> yeah uh, oh my gosh which like they they explain that but they never explain why he holds paper the way he does or why he holds the phone the way he does or anything yeah. like that he just does it's like mm-hmm. it's like they just do it that way just so he can be a weird quirky character yeah you know? yeah Oh, there was also the moment when he was giving his half of the acceptance speech or whatever it was alongside a light. And he's yeah. holding up the paper, acting like he's reading it with his weird way of holding the paper. But it shows that the paper is blank and he's literally just reciting exactly what light said. So he's basically just like, yeah, I prepared absolutely nothing. I'm just going to repeat what this guy said. <laughs> well, I mean, it makes sense, though, in a way, because like, he he's he's there for one reason and one reason only to watch to like get to know light so mm-hmm. he doesn't care <laughs> like <laughs> uh, 
They, I actually didn't notice that he like just repeated what Light said. I think I missed. I'm pretty I sure, that. yeah. Yeah, I'd have to watch it back, but that's that's funny. <laughs> uh, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I'm I don't know, right. definitely excited to see uh, what happens next. Mm-hmm. Um, just how they utilize the different characters and and everything. Because I mean, it's I don't know. I'm just very, very intrigued. I think a nice thing about this show is it's very unpredictable. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like, I didn't, like, I I was surprised when it turned out that there was another person with a death note. Like, I didn't know that. There was no way of knowing that was going to happen. Like, Well, yeah, they could show this big thing with, you know, Kira manipulating the media to show these videos. And then at the very end of it, it's just like, light staying there being like huh this ain't me yeah just like what it's not <laughs> yeah um, I, I was worried what oh and they utilized um the the whole the the shinigami eyes thing that oh yeah that uh ryuk had mentioned before where you can to you can sacrifice half of your lifespan for the eyes of a of a shinigami Mm-hmm. Uh, but light wouldn't do it because he wanted to live longer. Um, yeah, to yeah. see his world and rule it as its god and blah blah um, blah. Which, and that, but then Misa did, which is interesting because she had the Death Note way shorter, and she gave that up real quick. Which is like mm-hmm. interesting. <laughs> like, like, well, they mentioned that the Shinino- Shinigami that died for her gave his lifespan to her by doing that. So now she has half the lifespan of that. So uh, like before she was like going to live to a very long time and she might have already had. Huh. But now it might be back down to a human age again. Maybe. Or it might still be really long or might be like somewhat shorter than a human age. We don't know. Interesting. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Huh. Yeah, I guess I didn't think about it that way, but yeah, it's interesting because um, well, and, and and it's interesting how Light sees that as just like because at first he's like really annoyed with her, and he's like, I just want to get rid of her. Mm-hmm. You know, who is this copycat? What are they doing? I want to get rid. I want to kill her. You yeah, know, they're a liability. But he finds that out, and he's like, Oh, I can use that. That's. You know, and it, and he, you know, again, it's showing how he abuses his like control that he has over her, and it's just mm-hmm. kind of like he he doesn't he literally does not give two shits about her. He oh, just sees geez. her as somebody he, he can use. Once again, God complex. He's yeah. the most important, and that's it. Yeah, and it's like, like I, I I'm actually interested to see like. What are his, like, so, like, he doesn't, like, throughout the show, it seems like he doesn't legitimately care about anyone. Mm -hmm. You know? Like, yeah, his goal is to make the world a better place, but, like, he doesn't actually, is that that out of, out of love for, for people? Or is that out of just him being, like, I want to be the greatest person? You know, like, and also, like, I'm interested to see, like how does he does he actually have like does he actually care and have feelings like to actually care about his own family even you know right that's well, what i'm still, trying to figure out they've still left this entire thing open ended with his father being on the investigation team right cuz they we've haven't seen done anything with that his really father yet. really cares about him we know mm-hmm. we we know that um you know his mother does um, and his sister seems to as well, right? Like his family is all, which this is that that's also interesting. Is like his family is all really seems to be really nice, good people. So like he just how did he end how up? How did he turn way? up yeah. so evil? You know, um, part of it is the whole you know he's always been the best at everything, so he's always been told by everyone that he's great and he's amazing and better. But like right, and then like, he got the death note, so power yeah. trip immediately. But yeah, I mean he's definitely like a legitimate. Um, sociopath right 
Mm-hmm. Is that the one where you don't have any like feelings for like you don't have any like emotions for people or like Yeah, uh, that's either sociopath or psychopath, I think. Yeah, it's yeah, whichever one I think it might be sociopath, but like he legitimately is where it's like you know, anyone could die and he just doesn't care whatsoever. Mm-hmm. You know, he he literally like like the the fiance, the woman, he hears her whole sob story about her, you know, how she came over and her and her husband were going to or fiance, I guess her and her fiance were going to go back and get married and live happily mm-hmm. ever after whatever and and everything. And he still doesn't care about killing her. He's still like, yep, I'm still going to kill you. I don't care. Right. Like he, he pretends even- he he's good at pretending to care. But he doesn't whatsoever, which is I think that's like supposedly a, a a part of sociopathy, I believe. Sociopathy. Um, so being a sociopath, I don't know the the I way you're supposed to say. I think that's a real word. I might be wrong. Soci- <laughs> <laughs> so, but like uh, it, it drives it even further when he hears that story, and his immediate thought is, "Oh." She's a problem. I need to get rid of her. And there's not even a hint of regret or anything at all. Yeah. Yeah. And when he sees – when when he f- hears other people talk about their emotion, when he hears other people having emotions and, and what's going on, instead of seeing it as, oh, you're a person with real emotions, he's like, ooh, how can I manipulate their emotions to benefit mm-hmm. me? Which is a very – I if I know – if I remember right, is very like sociopathic – like kind of mindset um and the, his is like to the extreme you know um again yeah yeah he sees me he sees mises feelings for him as a tool as as just ooh, that's i can manipulate her feelings and he he's you know he lies without remorse you know mm-hmm. he just it's it's He's horrible. Uh, yeah, he's not a good person. I think it's interesting. Like he's realistically, he's the villain of this of the story. But he's he gets a lot of the focus. Yeah. Too. Like you like can argue that. Like, I don't know. It's interesting. He shares the main character position with L. Like it's it's but it's like he's he's, he's practically the protagonist because of how mm-hmm. much time is right. But he's also the villain of the story, essentially. Like he yeah. is. Um, yeah, it's it's interesting to see that. Um, and like, is there like a he- main hero? I guess. I mean, I guess you could see L as the main hero of the story. I guess, but I, I don't even know. Right. It's it's, it, it, it's almost better that they leave all this vague. Yeah, like I don't know if you cut it dry like this, it would lose a lot of what makes it good. Oh yeah, I mean that's half of what makes it interesting is that it's like, uh, like the two main characters aren't necessarily. I don't think either of them are really fully good people. Like I think I mean L's definitely a better person than Light. I think that's for sure. Um, Mm -hmm. But like, you know, he still is a little, little. Some of his methods are still a little off <laughs> a little right. messed up light is definitely like the ends justify the means and the means are to make me look good yeah but l is more they both stick to their own values and it's just that l is less willing to go as far as light is yeah yeah yeah, well, like, I'll still go pretty far with like kidnapping Misa and whatever, but he tries his damnedest to not let anyone die in the process. Yeah, exactly. He's yeah, yeah, um, yeah. It's both very interesting characters, I think, and you know they're great. Um, they 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 work great as like enemies, like they're characters that are very yeah. well. They work well together as like psychological enemies, kind of. Mm-hmm. Um, I I also really love their similarities as well, mm-hmm. especially how they both hate to lose. 
which like I think, you know, that's come up a lot even in previous episodes. But this, like, when L reveals himself to Light, like, directly, and Light just goes home and starts freaking out, like, ah, he won, he beat me, I'm stuck in his trap, ah, like, just losing it over, like, you know, I'm losing now, I can't let this happen. Despite the fact that in a way, like, I feel like a normal person might see that as a good thing, like, oh, I know what he looks like i know you know Mm -hmm. even though he doesn't know his real name like i'm one step closer to him you know and he doesn't know for a fact that i'm kira so therefore i have the advantage and i know he's you know well there was also he was also somewhat not sure at first like is he even the real l or is is he is this just a stand-in like before like yeah so it's still all still a little yeah because like a normal person would be like like, okay, this is weird. Why is he doing this? Is this some sort of trap? But either way, I'm closer. But Light just goes, this is definitely a trap. I can see all the ways that he's manipulating my do- manipulating me by doing this. And I can see, you know, if it's the real L or not, it doesn't matter. Because either way, if he dies, it's me. Then they know it's me. It's so like I'm in the palm of his hand right now and I need to get out of it. And he's panicking over it completely. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I also think if I remember right, there was that one scene too where the second Kira, you know, Misa sends a message and it was like said, said mentioned the Shinigami and Light's reaction yeah. or not in that light, L's reaction where he's like falls off his chair. He's like, <laughs> Are Shinigami real? And I was like, mm-hmm. I if it, it seemed a little weird to me. I'm like, would L really automatically be like, are Shinigami real? Like, I feel like he would be like, oh, it's probably just code of that they, you know, or some or whatever. But I don't know. I his reaction the, just seemed off only, to me. Yeah, it definitely does. The only reason I think it's even slightly realistic is because he knows of the message that the first Kira sent him that Shinigami love apples. Oh, and he's the only one who knows of that message. Yeah, that hasn't gotten out to the public. The other Kira can't have known about it. That's true. So I mean, he's like, so, wait. Like, there's an immediate connection. What, and right, there's a connection that both of them would understand, kind of. hmm But then, so obviously, Light goes, there's no Shinigami. Like, he, you know, lies, obviously. Yeah, it's... Because he doesn't want him, like, he obviously doesn't want him to figure that out. <laughs> Well, yeah, the moment they understand his powers is the moment that he's going to get caught. Yeah, exactly. The moment they know what they're looking for as mm-hmm. far as like, ah, let's see, somebody with a death note or somebody, you know. Right, right. Yeah, because that's the interesting thing about this investigation is at this point, they still have no clue how the person's doing it. Mm-hmm. They just know that, that the person is that Kira is killing people. They just don't know how. <laughs> so it's like, yeah. yeah they, they know like I, they, they can establish patterns like, oh, he has to know the face and name of the person. They can establish mm-hmm. patterns, but they still have no clue what the power is and how it works. Exactly. Right. And like they, I, I love that as a limiter for them too, that they don't know how it's happening. Because, mm-hmm. like, you know, there's a ton of ways that they can figure out who it is, who's doing it, how they do it, or, like, what they need to do it specifically, I guess. Mm-hmm. But if you don't know how, even if you know all of those, like, it, everything else gets so much harder. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you exactly. Need, you need that to figure out so many things. Like, that's a great right. foundation to build off of and get all the other stuff, but they just don't have it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. And it's like, it, it's interesting to just kind of see how they figure that out, though, too. Like how it's mm-hmm. like a slow, you know, because again, it's like they start to establish patterns and go, okay, we have determined based on these patterns that Kira can only kill somebody if he knows what they look like and knows their name. Mm-hmm. Um, 
So we know that they're getting information from news broadcasts because, you know, the people who are dying are people who are broadcasted on the news at some point, Um, you know, and then like, that's how they figured out that that's how he figures out that the, the second Kira isn't the original because those, he didn't, the second Kira didn't didn't know the names. Yeah. He didn't know the names. And also the types of people they were killing were not, the types that they would, you know, because remember they killed like people to demonstrate their power, like just to sh- prove to you that I'm Kira in this broadcast at this time, this person's mm-hmm. going to die. And it was like people that like the original Kira wouldn't kill because they're yeah, not like either, like either like completely innocent or like so small time that Kira doesn't really care. Yeah, right. Exactly. So so it's like interesting how they can establish these patterns over time and then use that information to narrow it down. And, mm-hmm. um, but yeah, it's, yeah. And, and I just, I, I, I'm really interested in where they left it off to just like yeah. where it's left off at this point. That, uh, that's a great way to end this. Just, I want to go through with you and analyze that situation just cause. So Misa's locked up doesn't understand what's going on at all because she lost the death note same with light and then his father is just there because you know he doesn't know what he would do and he's just sitting in there panicking Uh and the entire time Elle is trying to figure this out so you like you know you know what light needs to happen right now right Mm mm-hmm Light needs L to trust him completely so that he gets let out. Yeah. But, but there's a time limit on that because there's he can only write so many names in the notebook to like preset them. Well also there's that and he was saying if if somebody who was in the news recently since Light was locked up dies, mm-hmm. that would prove that he's innocent. But how is that going to happen? Because exactly. So, yeah. but if L gets let out, or if Light gets let out, L lets him out, which you don't know how that would ever happen. How yeah. is he going to get the notebook back? How is he going to get the memories back? Like he buried it in the forest somewhere, as far as we could tell. Right, and again, I, I'm guessing that he has. A plan for that and whenever whenever he gets out, he has a plan for like maybe, you know, again, like I said earlier, he probably set up clues for himself that only he would be able to understand, that he knows mm-hmm. he would be able to understand, maybe. Which my argument to that is if he is for has forgotten all that, like even if he finds those clues, is he gonna be able to recognize them as his own clues or is he gonna see them as clues from Kira? I don't, yeah, it depends yeah. on how he set it up, too. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Then there is Rem. Mm-hmm. Rem is watching him, and if he doesn't save Misa, Rem will kill him. So, either, so obviously he needs to prevent that, which he can either do by saving Misa like he promised, or by killing Rem. Which the only way to kill Rem would be to get someone else to try to kill Misa so Rem kills them first. Yes. But once again, he doesn't have his memories of any of this. He doesn't know about that promise. So what is he going to do? Right. The only way he will remember is by get, getting the Death Note back. And mm-hmm. would he have to just touch it again or would he have to use it? That's what I'm not sure on as well for him to get the memory back. I mean, this brings up another layer. They've never said that you could get your memories back. That was never in any of this. So even if he touches the same Death Note again, even if he touches Ryuk's Death Note again, it might be for nothing. Yeah, it might not. That is true. I didn't actually think about that because maybe you do, maybe you don't. So... Mm -hmm. Maybe he never gets his memory back in the show. It's completely just, possible at this point. So maybe he never gets his memory back and he just finds out, like finds the death note and, and realizes that, oh, he is Kira. 
but he mm. lost his memory and then decides I'm going to continue what I started, even though I don't remember necessarily, but. Right. So this whole situation has so many layers to it. And you think from the perspective of like, they're like, okay, he has a plan. And it's obvious that that plan would include getting the death note back because, you know, he needs it. That's his power. Right. How he's how he's going to do that doesn't matter because you already know because they never said that he could get his memories back that it is a gamble. Because yeah. if he doesn't get his memories back, then he just has a death note and what's he going to do? Is he going to relapse back in the Kira? Is he going to try to, you know, stop himself in whatever capacity that is? Or is he actually going to get his memories back and continue it? And if that's the case, if his gamble works out in that way what is after that like mm -hmm. what is the point of this just to clear his name i'm guessing that yes to get l to trust him yeah um would be yeah i don't know mm -hmm. it's, it's it's so many question marks i love it yeah yeah that yeah it's very much left uh, very open to where you're like who knows what's gonna happen i mean you know what's gonna happen but like i mean i do i remember some of the stuff that you said i'm just sitting here like oh you sweet baby boy yeah <laughs> if, only you knew. if only i knew yeah we'll find out in two weeks um yeah no so i'm definitely very intrigued by that um <clears throat> yeah so yeah. anyways um do you have much more to say about it? Then? No, I, I went on my rant already. <laughs> went on your rant, yeah, yeah. That's a good rant. It was a good rant. Yeah. Um yeah, no, I'm I'm don't have much more to say uh about these episodes. Um yeah, definitely very interested to see what, what happens next. Um so let's uh get to closing. So uh we're gonna continue talking about this in two weeks from now. Um because next week we are going to be talking about the movie, uh, The Truman Show. That's what it is. The Truman Show from right. whenever that came out. I don't know. Um, I was looking up to see if, if it was available like on Amazon or anything, Amazon Prime or anything. I don't think it was. So might have to so – I'll, I'll figure out what how I'm going to get it. Maybe I'll rent it on Amazon. I don't know. Mm -hmm. you can find we'll it wherever it you do anyways we're gonna watch the truman show um because that was recommended to us by arkin who was our guest that we had last week yeah. um so we're gonna watch that next week and uh the week after that we're gonna continue death note which we're probably we're planning on doing i think the next nine episodes because right because we definitely want to stop on 25 right so yes uh, you you have told me that 25 is a good stopping point mm -hmm. specifically, so we will try to stop on episode 25 um, next two, two weeks from now. Um, so, yeah, that's what you can expect in the future, so be excited for that, definitely. Um, so uh, another another thing I want to I want to bring up before we uh, close as well is we actually have created a – Waban YouTube channel, um, which is going to be, uh, I don't think nothing's up there up on there yet. Um, but it will be soon. Uh, don't worry. We've already recorded some videos, um, and did some editing on some of it. Um, mm -hmm. so basically, which I, I might also post, start posting the podcast there as well. I just haven't got around to doing that yet. <laughs> yeah. It's probably um, a good idea. Yeah. Um, but, uh, we're going to be doing gaming series of videos. So basically what a lot of it's going to be is, um, so cub here has cub, the goodest boy, uh, has, um, has played a lot of video games. He's, you know, much pretty big into gaming. Uh, mm -hmm. whereas I am not at, uh, at all. I haven't played very much of like, you know, popular games. I've played like Minecraft, Undertale, uh, Lego games, and like occasionally Call of Duty. 
And I, I played a little bit of GTA, but like not the story mode, just kind of driving around randomly, crashing into people, stuff like that. So I haven't played. I'm not a big gamer, uh, basically. So basically, these videos are going to be me playing games for the first time and uh, Cub sort of watching along and reacting and maybe helping out here and there. And you know, we'll have a good time. So so far, we have actually already recorded um, us playing portal and a little bit of portal two we haven't finished recording that um and i believe some of it has been edited so hopefully that'll be up soon um so we're really excited for that i'll leave a link in the description to the youtube channel again there might not be anything up yet on the youtube channel but you can at least go and subscribe if, if mm-hmm. you'd like so to be prepared for when stuff is uploaded there um but yeah anyways uh thank you everyone for listening to Waban. Um, you can find new episodes of Waban every Saturday at noon Eastern Standard Time. Um, and there are multiple locations you can listen to it as well. Uh, you can currently listen to it on my YouTube channel, uh, which is called NIM TV. That's N I M T V. And um, eventually the Waban YouTube channel, once, we, once I get going with that. Um, also, you can listen to it on multiple different audio platforms, um, those being uh, Anchor, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Breaker, Pocket Casts, uh, Radio Public. Those are all the audio platforms. There might be more. I don't know. It doesn't always tell me all of them on here, but those are those are. Yeah, those are where they are. So you can listen to it on all those different audio platforms, uh, whichever one you prefer. So um, anyways. Thank you, everyone, for listening to Waban. I have been Nim. And I'm Cub, the goodest boy. Goodbye, everyone.